Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you. This little guy. This is the Booze Blades Smoke. Um, and so great. Um, first off, a note though. This is a knife that I have done a stealth review on in the past. Basically, when Booze sent me the Arrow originally, he also included this prototype here, which I was unable to show to anybody for many, many months. And so I carried this guy a little bit. I did. I basically wrote up a full review for it, except I just shared it with Booze, and uh, he took some of the suggestions to heart. He made some changes. I'll make a video talking about the changes between this prototype and the actual production model right there but um anyways it was a nice process and the, the knife got at least in my opinion substantially better one would hope that addressing my issues would make me like it more but so anyways this does have a little bit of a soft spot in my heart because i was this is the first of my stealth reviewed knives that has gone to press so to speak uh, and so uh, but i've tried to stay neutral here and uh yeah and uh let's do a size comparison here real quick right here is your spyderco no this is an ontario rat one oh guys it's it's just getting worse here ontario rat one ontario rat two but what we can see here is that this actually is a little bit bigger than it might look initially you look at this guy just in a picture and you're like oh maybe three inches 3.2 this is a full three and a half inch blade on this guy and of course spyderco delica and what the heck an endura so again not a short blade here this kind of has a folding steak knife look that i think catches some people off guard then finally a quick note um this is manufactured the booze's specs by we knives so uh there you go uh they are a chinese company and they're doing great work so let's jump into the good the great the bad and the ugly of this uh booze blades arrow Actually, no, this is the smoke. The arrow was the last one. Anyways, on the good side, first off, I like the ergonomics on this knife very much. The clip is nice, and it's long enough. It fits very nicely in your hand and kind of fills the hand a little bit and makes this knife, coupled with the width, which isn't substantial, but it, it makes this guy fit very nicely in my relatively small hand. So that's first good thing. Next thing, I like the overall design of it. Um, William Booz has a way of designing knives that look fast. Um, that's a weird thing to say, but it's kind of got that same, you know, there are some sports cars where you look at them sitting in a parking lot and they still look like they're going fast. He does the same thing. The Booze Blades Arrow had this and this guy does as well. He has a great design aesthetic and it just, he makes these really fast looking knives and so that's kind of cool. I like the overall design and in that design there are a bunch of nice details. Um, things like, for instance, this lanyard hole, which is a very nice way to do a lanyard hole. You've not added any additional space. You get plenty of room for it. It doesn't hurt the ergonomics particularly. It's a good way to do a lanyard. Um, you can see there's a beautiful alignment of the handle scale, that is, and this hole here. So it's very nicely aligned, and those are always a nice thing. The clip is using a hidden screw put underneath there. There's a... Uh, cut out in the clip to get to this screw, which again is a really nice way of thinking ahead for this assembly here. Um, it's using ceramic bearings, which is something that, you know, it's not crucial, but it's always nice to see. This little extra pivot here is, uh, it's unique. I've not seen it before, but it's really, really nice. I believe it was made to Booz's specs, and the beautiful part about it is that it makes this pivot not free spinning because it can't turn within that cutout. That's that's just great. Um, it's using real screws rather than the Wee Knife Star screws, which is great when they're doing knives with real screws. They're doing great work. Um, the clip has a, enough ramp to it here. It slides right into the pocket. It's a nice height to it. And then one of the little things, but um, the backspacer has this little curl up here to protect the tip. Because as you're pushing this into your pocket, um, it would be easy if that wasn't there for your thumb to kind of compress into this space and get pricked on the tip as it did in the arrow. He's learned that lesson and he's fixed it in this guy. And so there were a lot of really great little details here that make this knife well designed and well thought out. So the design is absolutely very, very good. Um, the clip I talked about already, but that's the next good thing um, because it's got a nice length to it. We'll keep this securely in the pocket. Um, it's very nice for front flipping because as you're front flipping, very often you're going to want to hold it like this. And having the ability to get all three of these fingers onto this while still getting your thumb up there to flip is a beautiful thing. And so this length is a great way to go for it. And there's lots of RAM. It's just nice there. Um, this does have the ability to be open with two hands uh, because of this little hole in the blade here. And that's something that can occasionally be helpful. Um, particularly, you know, some people are going to get scared and confused by front flipping. And the other thing, the other factor is that if you just hand this knife to somebody who isn't familiar with front flipping, they can always pinch it open and that makes sense to them generally. 
so that's good. The blade on this guy is great. It's using a good steel, S35VN. Um, it's relatively thin stock, so it cuts pretty well. Um, it's thin behind the edge as well, and I just, I like this very much as a slicer. This knife will cut things. And the idea of folding steak knife here isn't completely insane, given the cutting ability. The action on it is great. Um, it has a very nice shape for the front flipper. See, there's enough prominence up here that you get good leverage, but without uh, so much that it starts snagging on things. You've got nice jimping up here, but it's not too aggressive, so it's not eating your hand. The detent on this guy is very, very strong, but that means that it very reliably flips out there, and uh, it is a very, very smooth action. Um, it closes and opens. I mean, just working this pivot is, is really, really great. Uh, and so I, I love the action on this guy very much. Fit and finish is very, very good. We Knives does great work, but there's no gaps in the backspaces or anything like that. Centering is dead freaking on. It's just great in that way. And then finally, the price on this guy is actually very good. You're looking at 200 bucks for this guy. That's for S35VN, titanium, a great action, great fit and finish. And this really unique design. And so, um, to me, all of that is the good. The price is pretty great, actually. Fit and finish is great. Action's great. Blade is great. Details are really nice in this design. And the overall design is itself pretty beautiful. Uh, it's got two-hand open ability, a good clip, and very, very nice ergonomics, at least for my hands. Let's talk about what's great here. What's great about this knife to me is the carryability. Not only in terms of weight, this is coming in at a very, very respectable 2.84 ounces, which means that this is less than an ounce an inch by a good margin. But it's also great in the pocket because as it's hanging naturally with the clip, it's canted a little bit to the side, it is super thin, so it's not taking up much room in your pocket. Everything is very smooth along the side here and the blade is nice and far away from the, uh, uh, the back spaces so you can get past here. There's no flipper tab, pocket pecking out to kind of snag on as it's hanging in your pocket, which is a really nice little contrast there. And then it's just, it's smooth on all sides. This is just a knife that is an absolute joy to carry. You put this in your pocket and it's very easy to forget that it's there, uh, which is just beautiful. And so to me, what's greatest about this knife by far is the fact that it is just so damn carryable. Let's talk about what's bad. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, front flip is just not for everybody. Um, particularly, this guy's got a pretty strong detent, uh, which I like, but I can see being unmanageable if you're not used to it. But you need a very specific technique to open a front flip. What you do is you take it, you hold it in your hand, you kind of curl your fingers up here so that they catch on the clip, and that they hold the knife like this, like you would a lighter. Then you put your thumb right here, and then, much like with a lighter, you slide your thumb back. And then when you do that, the blade comes flying out and opens up. This is not something that a lot of people are used to. If you hand this knife to most people, they're just going to try and pinch it open like this, and it works. And that's why it's a really nice idea to have two-hand open ability on a uh, front flip and knife. But uh, nonetheless, it's something that you get used to very quickly, and I'm now to the point where it's second nature, but it's something that's non-intuitive at first, and it is a fine motor sort of skill, because when you take this guy out of your pocket, you, you kind of have to get it in position, then pop it open, and as opposed to a knife like this, where you just take it out of the pocket, you press the button, and the blade's open. This is a little bit easier, and especially if you're busy doing other things, or if you've got your other hand full of something like that, front flippers are more fiddly, let's just be real here. And particularly if you've got very big hands. I've heard folks with huge hands complain about this, um, because this is a very thin knife, and it kind of requires you to have good control. Of, and so, again, Front flippers are fiddlier than a lot of knives. That may be a problem for you. Next thing, for my taste personally, this is completely a nitpick, this feels a little bit long in the blade. I would have kind of liked to see this come in at like 3.25 or 3. Um, it's not a big deal, and it in some ways makes it more unique with the folding steak knife sort of look, but it does feel a little bit long, and it does become illegal in a couple of places, well, a fair number of places because of that. Eh, whatever. It's a nitpick there. Next thing, um, I gotta be honest, I like the logo, uh, I think it's a great looking logo, but it's a little bit big here. I, I suggested he added one, but I didn't quite expect it to end up quite this large. If that could be shrunken down a little bit, I think that might be a little bit better. But the thing is, he put it on the, uh, on the present, or I'm sorry, on the lock side, so, eh, not a big, big deal. Actually, there's no way that a logo can be a big, big deal. Uh, it, uh, let me recalibrate myself here. I think I'm maybe nitpicking harder than usual to be. Uh, to compensate. Anyways, moving along. Um, the uh, blade hole on this guy is sort of a double-edged sword. At some level, it's nice because it allows easy two-hand opening. That's, that's very nice. But it's also a little bit snaggy. If we just look directly edge-on 
You can see here that because you've got a full flat grind, um, and that means that the top of the hole here is actually wider than the bottom of the hole. And so if we look straight on, you can actually see the top of the hole up there. And this gets a little tiny bit snaggy if you're cutting into a thicker foam or something like that. Um, it's not something that comes up very often, and you can very often just use this little chunk down here. Knife is still pretty slicey, but there is that double-edged sword here. Like I said, still nitpicking. Something that's a less of a nitpick is the sharpening choil here. They absolutely did not get, they, well, Bose absolutely did not get the sharpening choil quite right. You can see the plunge grind comes out further than the choil, and as a result, it's got a little bit of a smile. This is something that is way better than on the prototype, uh, where you can see there was just this huge little, well, huge little, uh, there was this huge prominence here, but still, um, either shrink the plunge grind a little bit further or just extend that choil out a little bit better, and I think it would be much nicer to sharpen as a result. Then finally, on the bad side, availability of this guy is very limited. Um, they're made in small batches uh, and then sold by Booz himself. So chances are you can't just order this guy from your favorite retailer. And in fact, there's going to be a little bit of delay in uh, reviewing this guy or in posting this review because I want to wait for him to get more back in stock. Because you, you review something and like, but you can't buy it. A little bit ugly. So you're going to wait for a little while on this one. Uh, and chances are that they're probably going to sell out pretty quickly again. So uh, that is the final bad thing is that availability is limited because they're being made in pretty small batches. So that's the bad on the whole, though. The uh, limited availability, the lack of uh, not quite getting the shopping and choil right is pretty unfortunate. The blade uh, hole is not super functional. You're not going to be able to flick with it, but, uh, and may interfere with slicing in a little way. Um, it's a little bit weirdly long for me, and front flippers are just not really great for everybody. It's a fine motory sort of thing. In terms of ugly, um, the ugly was fixed, so no ugly here. Happy about that. Uh, so let's just jump into the final conclusion. Look, final conclusion, this knife is a solid freaking gem, and I, I honestly love it. Um, even the prototype, when I took this guy out of the box, within like two days, I realized, oh man, he's got a gem on his hands here. And, and then to have the ability to make a couple of suggestions to fix some functional issues just made it all the better. Um, and so this knife is absolutely great. It's a joy to use, to play with, to cut with, and to carry, and the, the, the ugly, I'm sorry, the, the negative side of it is not that bad. Like, okay, sharpening choil needs to be a little bit better, maybe more availability, whatever. But those are not huge, huge deals, and to, to my mind, at least, this is the very best production front flipper that is out there. I mean, it bests, you know, the, the, the Kaiser Feist in terms of build quality, and frankly, this just has a much more interesting design, and then the, the Boker Excalibur variants, which the other kind of big name production front flippers just don't have the finishing and materials to come anywhere near this guy. Um, and the action's just smoother all around. You can do maybe a little better in the front flipper game by going custom from South African makers, but customs have their own problems and a price tag that's, you know, a couple hundred more than this at the very least. So overall, I gotta say, um, Bose knocked this guy out of the park. This knife is a solid freaking gem, and it's really cemented in my mind that this guy, both in terms of aesthetic design and in terms of knife design, is really, really good at this. So I'm looking forward to seeing what his next knife looks like, and if the manufacturing is as well done as it was here, I have no doubt that whatever field he goes into next, he's going to be smoking the competition there too. Get it? Uh, uh. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.